Howdy everyone. You can see now that I have the top hinge completely finished. This is the last, or the other side I should say, that I had been working on. This is a lot easier because it's so short. There's not as much drilling and uh, countersinking. I did it the same way I did the other side. I did the, uh, the shim first, dimpled it, and then I started to fit the hinge um, basically one started at this hole here, measured it, drilled it, countersunk it, put it in place, put the Clico in it, and then using my reference line that I had drawn on the hinge, I position that underneath the holes, and then I run a drill bit through and do two or three at a time, take it off, drill it, countersink it, put it back on, line it up, drill the next two or three, keep doing that process till it's finished. <clears throat> Same thing as the other side, uh, edge distance from the back of the hinge, about 3 16 That gives the hinge, the hinge sticks out forward a little bit so that when I have my cowling actually in place, there won't be any gaps underneath. There won't be any uh, knuckle gaps when you look down this seam. And then <clears throat> you can see the gap here between the hinges. That's roughly where the oil uh, door will be. The oil, uh, the, the hatch on the cowling so you can get to your uh, dipstick. And you can see that I've got full knuckles again. There's a full knuckle here and a full one here. So now at this point, um, I'm going to shift gears here. I've been thinking about this, and this is what makes the most sense for me. This is fitting these hinges, obviously, is so that I can fit the top cowling, which ultimately means I can fit the bottom cowling. This top skin and all of this hinge work is only held in place with Clecos, so there's potential for a lot of movement. The Clecos, of course, don't hold everything t as tight as a rivet, and there's a pretty good stack up in here. You've got the, the thicker countersunk hinge, you've got the thinner dimpled shim, and then you've got the thin dimpled skin. And the Clecos, in my opinion, just don't pull this down tight enough to my liking. I think there's a lot of potential for movement in here, especially because this whole top skin is only held on with Clecos. So I don't want to have this cantilevered cowling hanging off of Clecos and then rely on this, this set of Clecos and the Clecos on the top cowling to help support and line up the bottom cowling. So what I would like to do is have this skin and these hinges permanently riveted in place. So I have a nice solid foundation to work everything cow related off of. Before I do that, I need to do some more work inside the front of the airplane. I have to um, figure out how I'm going to, or I need to figure out the length for my control cables as far as engine controls. So if you remember way back, I had made a console, a throttle quadrant, um, to put on the left side of the plane for obviously the throttle, the mixture, and the prop control. I have to figure out how I'm going to run those cables and what length they need to be and what kind of can, um, ends I need on each cable at each end. So I need to figure out what kind of a fitting needs to go on the, the uh, throttle quadrant end of the, each cable. And I need to figure out what kind of end needs to be on each cable on the engine side as well. What kind of um, connector type of interface needs to be on this end of each cable. And overall length and some other things. So I have to start working on that so I can put the quadrant in. I can put the cables in. I don't know if I need to do anything else inside here, but I want to get all of that figured out and installed before I permanently rivet this top skin. 
So I'm going to step back from cowling work. I'm going to take a break from hinges. I'm going to do what I need to do to have everything finalized so I can put the top skin on. I think that makes the most sense. Then, like I said, I'll have a nice solid foundation to lay out and uh, work with the cowlings. So I think that's about it for now. And uh, I'll get some stuff figured out and I will talk to you guys later. Howdy everyone. So I'm back in the shop working on my own plane now and the next thing that I'm going to work on are the two small lines that run from my pressure sensors to the engine. So I've got a, a uh, what is this? This is the oil pressure sensor and this is fuel and I've got to run a line from, from the oil to the connection on the engine back in here and then this fuel um, sensor has to have a line ran down here to the fuel pump. And I'm using uh, AN3 size Teflon stainless braided tubing or hose. That's what you see here. I'm going to make these myself from scratch. I've got the hose ends here that I'll install. And I've been fooling around with different fittings, trying to figure out if I want to use 45 degree elbows, 90 degree elbows, straight fittings, things like that. So now that I have my fittings figured out, I need to put a restrictor in these, one for the fuel, one for the oil. I have the oil plans here, the prints. They do sell restrictors. They actually have a part number. This is obviously an explode or not an exploded view, but a, a zoomed in view. And it is a um, it's a modified 45 degree elbow in this picture. And I believe these are steel and I believe they're relatively expensive. And I don't know if they go as small as an AN3. I think these are AN4s. So I just decided to go ahead and make my own. Like I said, there's one for the fuel and one for the oil. So I've got a 45 degree fitting aluminum that I'm going to use. And I found some, these are, you can either call these grub screws uh, or set screws. Same thing. These are, um, the threads on these is 632, so it's basically like a 632, wow, these do not want to stay put, a 632 size set screw. And I have, I don't know if you can see through this bag, but I have an actual restrictor here. This came out of one of the quarter inch steel fittings that was on my engine when I received it. And uh, this is an, the actual restrictor here. It has a hole already through it. I ran drill bits down through it until I found one that was close. That's this drill bit here. That's a number 57 drill bit. So I'm going to take these set screws. I'm going to drill down the center of them using this number 57 drill bit. That will very closely match the hole size that's in the actual fitting that came off of the engine. So like I said, these are number three AN fittings. So they're quite small. Obviously they're smaller than quarter inch. And the 632 set screw threads into this perfectly fine. Of course you have to use a 632 tap, but you do not need to do anything to the hole. You can take the, the fitting just like it is, take a 632 tap, tap this hole, and you're all set. Make sure you clean it out really well. You don't have to pre-drill the hole or anything. It's already the perfect size to run these 632 set screws down into. Be careful how deep you thread. Um, I went deeper than I wanted to. If you thread it all the way through, then obviously this screw, your set screw, you'll be able to screw all the way through and then it will actually fall out. So tap it just deep enough that the set screw will set into the fitting all the way, 
but not so much that it can fall out. You want, you want to be able to run the set screw down into this and have it stop. This one is a little deep, but it does stop. I didn't tap it all the way through. So like I said, number 57 drill bit ran down through the center of a 632 set screw without doing any other modifications to the fitting. Just run a 630 through a 632 tap down through it. And that's not going to focus. But anywho, that's what you'll end up with. So let me do the, I've got one more of these to make up. And then I'll uh, drill these and assemble them. And then I'll move on to the rest of the hose um, set up. But just wanted to kind of get this out there. If, if anybody else is, is considering running a uh, an AN3 size hose and you need to make up your own restrictors, here's um, at least one way to do it. All right. Talk to you guys later.